What's up everybody, it's the Bipolar Prophet and welcome back to Maypole Farm and Farming Simulator 22, Episode 1, again. Why again, you ask? Well, it's simple. Um, the first episode, I wasn't happy with it. And I just wasn't happy with the, the overall waffliness of the video. Make sure you check out this map, Maypole Farm. It's on the Mod Hub. I'll leave a link in the description. So anyway, so what happened since Episode 1 and now Episode 1 again? Well, we moved. In the original, uh, the original episode one of this, we were down here in this corner. So I instead decided to move to this side of the map. Uh, so we own, if I click on the farmland here, we own this block right here. So this farm, um, dairy farm, sheep farm, I think there's a horse barn here too. Uh, fields 98, 97, 99, and 100. Uh, predominantly grass, but we do have one field of oats, which is nice. Uh, we'll need the straw, right? So we have a Massey 3120 um, because I like Masseys and we only need a small tractor in the very beginning of this hooked up to the Isaria Pro Scout uh, soil sampler. And we're gonna take some soil samples of our fields. Now the oats probably aren't gonna matter. I am gonna take some soil samples. Um, it's gonna cost me some crop, I think. Actually, you know what? No, we won't do any We won't do any soil samples on the oats because I don't wanna lose the crop, right? I don't know what the yield's gonna be like. It's probably not gonna be great, but it's gonna have to do. Um, but we will do soil samples on everything else. Less waffling, more working. I'm gonna start off right here. Um, and we'll get some soil samples. Unfold this. Try to get this somewhat right. Back up into the corner here so I can get as much of this corner as possible. Now, like I said, eventually this is gonna be a, um, a sheep field so or a sheep pasture, so it isn't really gonna matter. But for right now, we're gonna get some grass in it. We're not gonna have sheep for quite a while, so we might as well get some grass in it and um, make use of it for the cow. So uh, let's see, how do I wanna do this? I wanna maximize my reach here with every probe. So I guess that'll do. I'll move my keyboard a little closer so I don't have to keep turning my head so much. Uh, I turn my head and I move away from the mic and then the, the mic audio goes bad. And So yeah, so in the first episode of this, I was doing a lot of, you know, well, let's, let's keep our fingers crossed, right? I've decided that that's just not sustainable, right? It's not the way farming is done anymore. So we're not going to do it like that anymore. It's that simple. We're going to come in here. We're going to take our soil samples. We're going to take what we get from the, from the land, you know, first time around. Because obviously a couple of these fields I'm not going to be able to do too much about. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make sure that we know what we're looking at so that when it does come time to, do, to work these fields, to you know, the minerals and the chemicals and everything else, that we're doing it right and we're getting the maximum benefit from them. No more guessing. There's no need to guess anymore. It's the 21st century, right? It's 2022. The technology exists. We don't need to guess. Let's just get it, you know, let's, let's use the technology. Let's get it right. Um, and let's build the best operation we can. I want to thank Brewster Agricultural Consultants for uh, the use of the Isaria. Uh, they rent these things out. They have a whole warehouse full of them, uh, sort of a DIY soil sampling uh, service they provide. You go pick it up. They show you how to hook it up, and they show you how to use it to give you about an hour of instruction. Um, you know, and then you take all your, your dirt samples back to them, um, and they analyze them, and they give you a soil map and tell you exactly what's going on with your soil, which is a great, great... It wasn't bad. It was 600 bucks, I think. Uh, probably be a couple hundred, 300 more to to um, get the samples analyzed. So, you know, not bad at all. I have the time to do it. I might as well do it. So, Brewster Agricultural Consultants, thank you so very much. Now, again, there's not much I'm going to be able to do to this field. Well, there's not anything I'm going to be able to do to this field, but I might as well at least get the soil map. So that way, after it's cut, I know what I'm looking at, and I know how to fix it. I also want to get uh, some kind of nitrogen sensor. Now, this tractor doesn't have a front um, linkage on it. This is a mod. It also doesn't have the, the spots to put the, um, the Isaria Pro Compact uh, sensors on the wing mirrors, but that's fine. I could always just put one on the back and drive around, I suppose. Um, That'd be another rented item from Brewster Agricultural Consultants. I don't see the need to own one of those, really. The only time we'd really need that is when we're either slurrying or mucking or um, spraying fert, right? So don't really see the need to own one of those full-time, just like I wouldn't own this thing. 
this is kind of a one-time use thing now if we do pick up more land down the road obviously i'd probably go back and 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 pick another one up or let them do it depending on how busy i was but i figured this time around i had the time to do it so i might as well do it myself So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this up. Uh, I'm going to cut out uh, the video here. I'm going to finish this up and I'll come back to you when it's all done. And we're trying to decide what the next thing we're going to do is. I think it's going to be mowing this uh, or at least some of it anyway. Um, that'll probably be the next thing we do. Anyway, guys, I'll see you when this is all done. Okay, and we're back. So uh, so this is happening. Um, it turns out this field of oats was ready to go. Um, and I didn't want to take the chance of losing it. So I decided, well, you know what? We're going to need a harvester, so let's buy one. I bought this Class Maxi 108 Dominator. Um, it's old, you know, it, it's not very big, uh, but it works, and that's all that really matters. One feature that I really like about the new course play is the field margin uh, parameter, where you can set how much more or less field you want course play to, to set uh, its course for, right? So if you've got a lot of trees right up against the edge of the field, and maybe you don't want to cut them down for whatever reason, you can always back the field margin off the edge of the field a little bit. Obviously, you'd be missing some crop, whether that be, you know, arable or grass or whatever. But at least you have less of a worry of it trying to turn the equipment in to a tree or a fence or a hedge or a stone wall or a building or whatever. So, um, you know, course play always is always going to miss some. It's just the way it works. But that's okay. I'd rather miss a little bit on the edges than constantly have to pull it out of trees and, you know, buildings and everything else. So um, I left the yield monitor up here down on the bottom of the, of the screen there. You can see it. It's not great. <laughs> it's, you know, hovering between the 60, 75% yield, uh, you know, of the maximum potential off this field. Okay, you know, again, I, we knew that was going to happen. I couldn't do anything to this. It was ready to go. We start from scratch after it's uh, harvested, right? So I picked up this. It's a dually um, grain trailer um, from 4D modding. Um, it's got a Ireland, uh, this is a cork registration uh, for my good friend, Farmer Dad. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this, get it fired up, and uh, we'll get this down to the farm. Now, I have to decide how I want to pick up this straw. I think that ultimately baling it, I need a bit more of a gear here, I think. Uh, baling it is probably not going to be in our best interest. I think picking it up with a forage wagon, wagon and dumping it into the... Uh, can't quite see, hope nothing's coming. Um, and dumping it into the cow shed and then into the the robotic pit uh, would be the best way to do it. Just because with a baler, then I need, you know, I have a front loader console on this. I don't have a front loader for it, but I need a trailer and I need, you know, forks and I need a front loader and all that other stuff. And we only have $135,159 at the moment. Um, I do have course play getting paid, which is something I don't, I don't normally do, uh, but I thought I'd give it a go this time to try to keep the money the money right try to let's make the money a real thing let's make the money an aspect of the game this time which is not something that i generally do i generally you know i'll xml money in and out you know if i think i'm making too much or if i don't if i need some for something you know i, I come up with a bit of story and i say i went to the bank got a loan and all that but i think in this in this one at least for now until some sort of role play you know full-on story element uh presents itself to me i'm probably going to keep the money as the money so We'll pay our workers, we'll pay for things, you know what I mean? We won't go crazy, you know, taking out money at the bank and everything else. Um, and we'll just have to make do with the money that we have. Yeah, I really like this uh, this class uh, Dominator. You know, obviously, this has been around a long time. Giants keeps kind of re-upping this for, for the different versions of the game. Um, but it's a perfect size for what really in this series, at least in the beginning, is not going to be a whole bunch of arable. We jump inside here. Um, it's a little quieter. This, you know, this is really going to be dairy focused, obviously. So we're going to need some arable for straw. We're still going to have to buy some straw, and I'm sure. Um, but we'll do as much arable as we can, without taking away from the grass focus. Now, of course, that's going to mean that you know there's going to be months out of the year where we're not going to be doing much of anything. 
So there will be a bit of fast forwarding in this. There will be a bit of time management in this. It won't be quite as one to one as I'd like it to be, as I mentioned in the first episode, where I wanted to run this, you know, as one to one as I possibly could. I think because of the focus that I have on this farm with being dairy and grass only being a, you know, spring, summer and early fall operation. Well, you know, unless we plant a whole bunch of arable um, or we plant corn to chop for silage, then, you know, there's not going to be a lot to do in the late fall, in the winter. Might do some forestry in the winter just to augment some income, you know what I mean? Because we won't have much income in the winter except for, you know, milk. Um, I'm also trying to decide if I want to start with cows that are ready to go, that are ready to milk, ready to calf, um, or do I want to start from calves and wait the entire time to come around? Honestly, I may do a combination. I'll probably do a few. I don't know what the number is going to be of what I'm going to start with, um, but I'll probably do a few calves and then a few ready-to-go cows um, just so that we have some milk coming in so we can make some money. I think that's the best way to do it. So yeah, so obviously he's been been around the field well almost twice now. Um, he's not quite fifty percent, so the yield isn't great. There's there's some weeds uh, in this field. You can see them. Um, you look down through the header, you can see some weeds. So it's not too too bad, but it's not great either. Uh, the grain coming out, you know, it's not too dirty. It's not bad. Uh, I'll live with it. No, I mean it is what it is. There wasn't anything I could do about it anyway. So we'll take it for what it is. Probably what I'll do is once he gets around here one more time and there's some room to park the trailer. I'll probably set this to um, combine self unload because there's no point in me chasing him around. His field's not that big. So he can just drive back and, uh, and unload the trailer, unload into the trailer himself. Probably time lapse this, I would imagine. Um, you know, no point in me sitting here waffling on for an hour and a half while this does its thing. There's really not much else going on. Um, so while I so as we get ready for the time lapse, let me just say this. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for sticking with me. That's really the big one. Thanks for sticking with me. You guys that, that comment all the time, that like the videos, that watch the videos, you have been with me for a very long time. I've been making videos, farm sim videos, since 2014. That's nearly eight years. Um, you know, with long breaks in between, obviously. And it means everything to me that you guys stick around and watch the videos that I make. Thank you so very much. I want to make videos that you guys want to watch. I want to make videos that I want to watch. You know what I mean? I am not the slickest. I'm not the smoothest. I'm not the most informed. You know what I mean? If you watch me to learn something, I, I, I probably not the guy. Not because I don't know what I'm doing, but because I'm not the best teacher in the world. But I appreciate everybody who comes and watches a video, everybody who clicks the like button, everybody who subscribes, and that's all you ever have to do here, guys. Thank you so very much for taking time out of your day to come watch one of my videos. It means everything to me. And as always, guys, if you have anything you want to say, leave it in the comments. Questions, comments, recommendations, suggestions, tips, feedback of any kind is always appreciated. I read everything. I reply to almost everything. And as always, this is the Bipolar Prophet saying, see you later.